Welcome. So here we go. In this case, I have 9 divided by x minus 3 plus 2x divided by x plus 1. Now in this case, we see we have two binomials. And the only thing that really the binomials share is an x, right? So we know we can keep our, our, uh, our LCM that's getting containing with x. We don't need to go to x squared or x cubed or anything like that. But we see my binomials really have nothing to do, not, aren't really in common with each other. And we can't just say, you know, what do negative 3 and 1 have in common? Because if I multiply them by this one by negative 3 and this one by 1, I'm not going to get uh, common denominators at all. So what I want to do is you know, look at this and see you know, what it would be my least common multiple. Now, when you have something like this, we can, one way that we can determine this is just say, well, let me, let me go over an example. Let's say if I had 3 over 4 plus 1 over 3. Now, a lot of times when we find, when we find our LCM, we determine the LCM was 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. A lot of times, you can just multiply your denominators to get your common denominator. It's not always going to be the least common denominator, but a lot of times, you can just multiply them, and that's going to be your denominator, or your common denominator. So in this case, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, rather, I can't simplify these any further, but what I can do is I can just multiply my two denominators, and that will give me a common denominator. And that's going to be our case, which is also going to be our least common denominator, x minus 3 times x plus 1. So therefore, if I'm going to say my least common multiple is x minus 3 times x plus 1, what I can do then is if I say, all right, I already have x plus 1 here. All this multiplied by x minus 3. Make sure you multiply, though, on the numerator and your denominator. Here, I already have x minus 3, so let's just multiply by x plus 1. Therefore, you know you're going to have common denominators since you multiply them. Now I just need to make sure I apply my distributive property in my numerators to get them completely the same. So by applying distributive property over here, I have 9x plus 9, and then plus 2x times x is 2x squared, and 2x times 3 is a negative 6x. And that's going to be all over my common denominator, my least common denominator, which will be x minus 3 times x plus 1. Now I just need to combine like terms. Well, 2x squared, I can't combine that with anything because it has a variable factors of x and x. Nothing else has 2x's. So I'll have 2x squared. 9x minus 6x is going to be a positive 3x plus 9. Then I break that over x minus 3 times x plus 1. Now, one thing you always want to do is look at this and say, all right, well, can I factor the 2x squared plus 3x plus 9? So I can just go back to a little factoring technique and say, all right, that's going to be 18 and 3. What two numbers multiply to give me 18, but then add to give me 3? And we look at this, we could say, well, we have 18 and 1, no. We have 9 and 2, no. Uh, we have 6 and 3. 6 times 3 would give us 6, 12, 18. Uh, that would give us if we subtracted them, but that means my 18 would have to be negative. So therefore, that's not going to work. 6 and negative 3 would work, but therefore, that would have to be a negative 18, which in this case, it is not. So therefore, we can't uh, simplify this. So therefore, that's going to be our simplified answer. If we want to add restrictions, remember, our restrictions are what our denominator cannot equal. So and remember, our denominator cannot equal 0. So we need to find the values that are going to make our denominator equal to 0. So if this binomial equals 0, when I multiply by my other binomial, that's going to equal 0. So I need to determine what's going to make this equal 0. Well, I have x minus 3. So therefore, x cannot equal 3. Because if x equaled 3, I would have 0. 0 times anything is 0. And then we'd have 0 in the denominator. Over here, I see that x cannot equal negative 1. Because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Again, we'll have 0 in our answer. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the LCM and then combine your rational expression. Thanks.